Hey there Akuma fans, Charlie with the Gossiger Application staff. Got another video for you today and this time we're going to talk about broaching. I've had quite a few customers that have uh, asked me, yeah, how in the world can I cut a T-Way brooch in my part? And um, it seems simple enough, but um, uh, there's some ins and outs that we definitely want to talk about. So let's start by talking about the way we're going to hold on to a brooch. Uh, if you have a rotary brooch, you're doing an entire ID dynamite. Go for it. Knock yourself out. Those things are awesome. You can just simply position it, uh, do all of the, the preamble stuff that the manufacturer recommends, slight taper on the beginning of the hole, come in at an aggressive uh, feed rate so that the, the rotary brooch won't double clutch, and then simply feed forward and allow the wobbling of the bearing on the brooch to, uh, to do its thing. Uh, I could go into that for hours and hours and hours, but let's talk about what the, uh, uh, what the rest of us are going to do that don't own a wobble brooch. I'm going to run over to my collision avoidance screen right here and let's zoom all the way back out so that we can see what I've set up. There we have just a regular turning tool holder and uh, there we go. So I've got a, a graphic representation of a maybe a collet chuck or a, um, a, a tool block. Somehow I've held on to this chunk of rectangular keyway stock that's been sharpened into a brooch. That's, uh, you know, that's that's the down and dirty nitty gritty. That's uh, you know, the usual way that we're going to make this uh, make this brooch happen. So now we got to talk about how to program this. And I've made several different uh, examples that we're going to take a look at. Uh, by the way, before I, I tango off onto that, you'll notice that I did put this in a solid boring bar holder. It's not recommended for you to do a static brooch like this uh, with a live tool. You think, oh, hey, I got a live tool. It's got a collet in it. Boom, I'm done. And, you no, know, the, the bearings of a live tool are really not designed to take this kind of uh, uh, re uh, axial load when the bearings aren't rotating you're you're probably going to pit your bearings or the races and not something i want to do so i put this in a static holder clamped on it good and tight because of course the the pressure in the z plus direction is going to be pretty significant so we want to make sure that it's good and tight and no bearings to give us a rough time so let's go and look at a couple of my different programs here first one is just it's probably the easiest and uh, what I did was called up the tool, had an M5. Now, this example is assuming that you are able to put this, this keyway at any location inside the, uh, the ID. And, th and that's the one we're doing. We're doing an ID keyway, OD, yeah, we'll use an end mill or square the corner, whatever. So we're doing uh, the inside and a nice little key cut. So this is assuming I can put it anywhere in the inside of the part or uh, I'm limited to C0. So I've thrown in an M19 to orient the spindle and it'll hold it in place for me. Wrap it to the position of the um, start of the ID, which in my case, let's zip back over here. You can see I've got, I've already bored and turned and the, the part's just simply ready for broach. So I'll go to my one inch diameter, which is the basically the ID of the bore. Kick into G94 mode. This is important because the spindles aren't turning. Therefore, you need to have inches per minute feed rate specified, not inches per revolution. And in this case, I'm just doing a G74. That's the, the normal face pecking cycle. There is the final diameter, not the radius, the final diameter of the groove. So by saying I'm going to one and a quarter inches on the ID, that means this is going to be an eighth inch deep, uh, radial deep uh, keyway. That's what I'm trying to say. Depth of the groove there, the I value that I have, this is the amount of um, step up. Obviously, I can't just take this brooch and go an eighth of an inch and blast it. No, not unless I'm machining butter or margarine, maybe jello, but the surface finish in jello isn't all that good. So we're going to go 20 thousandths at a pop. This is a 
probably because of the, the depth that I've specified here, we're probably doing aluminum or plastic. If you're doing something greater than that, you're going to have to go down into the thousandths or the tenths uh, in order to make this happen. And I have chosen in this case to do an actual pecking motion into this part. So my parts here, I'm going to go to the depth and I'm going to peck at it like so. Uh, if this is a work hardening material, obviously I don't want to do that. We're going to experiment with that in just a second. So I'm going to go 20 thousandths per peck and then it's doing a short retract. The L value is how far to go into the part before it retracts all the way back out for the subsequent peck. In this case, I don't want the tool to come all the way back out. There's a chance that it could yeah, do something funky. So I want to keep the keyway in there. Therefore, I'm telling it, hey, don't retract all the way. I've made the L value greater than the entire depth of my, um, of my keyway. And a feed rate, I'm picking 50 inches a minute right now. Obviously, I don't have to worry about feeds and speeds and surface finishes and that stuff. So I'm happy. And then once that cycle is done, I simply retract and go home. Let's see what it does for us. So now we'll come into our automatic mode and we will hit cycle slam. And of course, my spindle inner, ha, my C axis is still on. Hey, how many of you ever have to deal with that? Okay, so manual mode, turn off my C axis. Yeah, we are good to go. Let's give it a shot. Okay, now it orients and let's blow this up so you can see what it's doing. It is pecking, so let's let's do a single block and slow things down so that you can actually see the peck. Otherwise, my graphics card is just not quite doing it. There we go. We got a feed and a peck and a feed and a peck and so forth and so on. Now that you see it, let's take off the single block. Let's talk about what it's doing. So here I am at 1.1, and then it's going to retract and go to 1.5. Again, that's a diametrical value, so we're actually only doing... 25 thousandths per side. Now one thing that you will notice about this is when we get to the hole, the depth, boom, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going, almost. Okay, so you notice it did not move down in X for the retract. It's retracting straight out of the hole. Okay, fine. I whatever. I might be dragging the uh, the the tip of the brooch a little bit, but, you know, whatevs, yo. If that's not desirable, I do have some other cycles that will retract. Let's talk about those here in just a second. I want to show you a couple of the, the options that I can make happen with this particular version of the program. Let's get back in here, and you notice that I did my I of 0.05. If I did not want to... Uh, take too much let's drop this down to something like uh, oh five thousandths and I'm going to omit this little the little pecking action that I have here and I can do that simply by making the D also greater than the total length of travel of the machine uh, not the machine the part uh, be specific now when we run it even if we did it in single block you would see that the the tool just goes all the way down no peck basically i just turned my lathe into a shaper from 1942 i think that's pretty cool but obviously if i'm doing that i'm going to take a, a much finer peck but the result is the same it is going to broach in retract move out broach in retract move out so forth and so on Okay, let's speed that up so that I can get on to my next example. So now we're going to start exploring some of the other options that Akuma gives us. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. The next step for the next example, I'm going to throw a curveball into this and say, hey, my my keyway cannot be at or <laughs> is not called out at C0. It's at C90. So what do I do now? Because M19 is only going to go to C0. What the heck can I do about that? Let's go ahead and abort this little process right here. We will get the tool out of the way. And look at the next example. A brooch with an M110 in there. So this 
is going to give me the ability to turn on the C axis and orient this part so that the brooch will go wherever the, the process tells me. The basics, let's open up the, the first one so that we can compare it with this one. So the basics are exactly the same, but instead of the M19, I'm going into M110. All right, close the other one. You'll notice here that I have a, um, an M13 SB1000. That's the, the command to fire up the live tool. I told you not to use a live tool, didn't I? Well, what the heck is my problem? When there is a solid block on there, this is going to fire up the live tooling motor, but it's not connected to anything. So eh, the whole point of this is there is an interlock in this machine that when you're in M110 mode, it will not allow feed motion unless the spindle's rotating. It's a little safety thing. Yeah, all right, awesome. There is a code, this little guy right here, M808, that will ignore this interlock that's causing us problems. Uh, okay, great, so why do I have both? Just to show you, uh, uh, my particular simulator does not have the option for M108 or 808 uh, interlock release. So just wanted to show you that either one of these is going to be necessary because we either have to have a spindle rotating, even though it's not turning the tool, it's just turning the motor that's supposed to be connected to the tool, or the M108, uh, 808. Boy, that's like the second time I've said that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's been a long day already. Then I'm going to use the G183 cycle for this particular example. I do have a couple more that we'll do, but let's uh, let's just talk about the G183. That's your regular live tool and peck drilling cycle. So in this case, I don't have the uh, ability to just tell it to move out with each subsequent pass. So I've added X values for each subsequent and still the same thing with the D and the L. If we want to peck as we're doing the brooch, we can make these lower than the, the actual travel of the part. Or in this case, I said, hey, peck at it. So let's see what this guy does. It's pretty much the same thing as what we saw previously, but this time you'll notice my C, whoop. ah, I didn't put the C value in here. Ah, you caught me. Here I was trying to get all cocky. In my cycle, I better put the caps lock C90 dimension. Now that I've done that, if I select and quit, now you'll see, hopefully, Charlie did his homework, we'll be able to see that my c-axis is still connected and now my auto mode there we go now our c is at 90 hey hallelujah i just scrapped a part i better go tell the boss honey bad joke and now as i'm stepping out with each subsequent x pass everybody's happy once again, uh, to beat a dead horse, if I did not want it to peck at each pass and just do the shaper action, just make the D as large as larger than the total travel of the, the feature. Okay, so now one more for you. This one is going to take care of a little more, uh, a little more technical stuff than the G183 will. Here I am using the SB1000 or the M808, whichever one I want. Once again, repeating where the, the bore is gonna be. This time we're gonna use a G190 cycle and I don't need cut, do, 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 all that subsequent stuff. So G190 is a keyway cutting cycle that's designed to be used with a live, an end mill. But, in our case, we're using it for a brooch. Why not? The uh, basic integers that need to go in there, the same as everything we've done previously. We've got an X, that's the final diameter. The depth of the hole, the C location, the I, that is the um, distance from where the tool is now to where the, uh, the uh, axis cut is gonna start. D, that's my depth of cut for each one. L, once again, is the uh, the 
retract value. You, it gives me a finish allowance. Ah, kick butt. It's going to pull out that finish allowance uh, on its final pass, but this gives me a nice little, little clean finish for the final move. A feed rate. And then you have the M211 and M213. The, uh, the 211 can be either a... Um, 211 meaning I am cutting in one direction or 212 which is I'm cutting in two directions. If you're cutting in two directions I really hope that this is like a groove tool that has the ability to do a zigzag but <laughs> yeah. in my case I don't have that. This is simply a piece of tool steel with a sharpened end so M211 is implying that I'm only cutting in one direction and then I'll do my retract and reciprocate. The M213 or M214 is a designation for the cutting method. It's whether you are not whether your in feed is going to be a um, uh, designated or it's going to be an equal. Oh, what does that mean? Yeah well equal in feed is simply meaning that um, you are doing the same cut in or out or you are doing a, um, a designated which means you are reducing with each in and out. We're using M211. Who cares? We're going to leave it. Uh, for this argument 211, 213, let's just hold that as our, our standard. Let's go ahead and select and quit. Save the program and let's see what happens with this one. Blow it up. You notice that it feeds in. Let's slow it down and do our single block so that we can talk about it. There is my feed out to 1603. 1.12. It fed in. Next execution retracts back to my initial plane and comes back out to the Z of 0.1. So here we have, turn off single block and just let it rock. Here we have a nice delightful little shaping cycle with one line. So the big choice for most of you is do I want the tool to retract after every pass or am I just satisfied with the retract being right where the, the, the cut cycle was? There you go. We have our three. Just to refresh, we got standard brooch where I use the G74, one where I'm using M110 so that I can clock the spindle, and uh, the G190 cycle. Now, before I sign off and do my usual, you know, like and subscribe pandering, uh, somebody is bound to ask, hey, wait a second, can't you use the M110 to clock with the G74 pecking cycle? Nope, nope, it won't do that. It's because you're specifying two different platforms to be operating in. G73 and G74 is a turning cycle. M110 is the uh, the live tooling cycle. So now you've got a contradiction. You're saying, hey, let's speak sp Spanish. Bonjour. Yeah, not compatible. So that's why I have those three different styles. They, uh, they each will satisfy a different need that you may have coming up. And if you have any questions, please reach out to your local Gosker application staff. We're always here to help. Thanks.